The St. Louis Cardinals head to the Bronx to take on the Yankees this weekend. And today we're going to cross things over with Locked On Yankees host Stacey Gatsoulias to preview the series, talk about what's going on with our teams and what the future will look like for both franchises. You are Locked On Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Cardinals fans and Yankees fans. I'm J.D. Haffern, and I'm a national radio sports anchor, born and raised in the Lou, and a lifetime Cardinals fan, and I'm your host for Locked On Cardinals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day. You can follow me on Twitter, X, and J.D. Sports Radio, and the podcast at LO underscore Cardinals. I want to thank those of you who make Locked On Cardinals and Locked On Yankees your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, be sure to follow all of us on YouTube, like, subscribe, and comment, and interact with us. Hit that notification button so you know when the new episodes of Locked on Cardinals and Locked on Yankees are posted. This particular version of the show is serving Cardinal Nation and giving the best fans of baseball all of the info about the birds on the bat. Today's episode brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. You can go to prizepicks.com slash locked on MLB. Use the code all lowercase locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Stacey Gatsula is joining us here today, host of Locked on Yankees. You can find her at Stacy Gotts on Twitter X. Do you still call it Twitter? I, I still haven't given up on that yet. I still I'm say I'm not Twitter ever X. calling it X. It's <laughs> Make sure you guys give her a follow. Uh, they they do a great job over at Locked on Yankees, and uh, you know it, it's fun to be able to to do a a crossover with you with a little interleague action between two of the most storied franchises in Major League Baseball. I wish this series was set up to be uh, a little more meaningful for both squads. Uh, the Cardinals are are just kind of hanging on right now, just, you know, mathematically still in it, but realistically probably out of it. Whereas the Yankees, first in the American League East, trying to, to get that number one seed in uh, in the American League for the, the playoffs, which are coming up in about a month. So uh, good to talk some baseball with you. Tell me about the Yankee season so far. We, we we know that Aaron Judge and Juan Soto have obviously been huge pieces. I want to talk about them because we're really jealous because the Cardinals had a somewhat similar situation just a couple years ago where we had a dynamic duo, and uh, it's not quite the same as you guys have, but um, we're going to get into that a little bit. But what's been going on with the Yankees? Because uh, just coming off, is the sky falling, Stacy? Because the Washington Nationals, <laughs> Out of nowhere, take a couple of games from you guys. And I know how fans get upset. I deal with it too on the Cardinals side when you're when you're used to winning and then you lose a couple of games to a, a team that clearly you're supposed to be better than. People get very upset. How, how are you guys dealing with all of that right now? I mean, you would think the Yankees were in last place after what happened <laughs> in Washington. Um, the problem with the Yankees this season, I, well, okay, this isn't really a problem. There's a good thing. They're good against teams above 500. They have one of the best records in baseball against teams who are over 500. But on the flip side, they're just over 500 against teams who are under 500. It's as if they play down to the competition, you know, mm -hmm. and that's been a problem all season. And, you know, in those games, the Yankees have a tendency to lose games in embarrassing ways, in sloppy ways. They had four errors the other night against the Nationals. Carlos mm -hmm. Rodon allowed five stolen bases in the first like three innings the other night. Just awful baseball. And that's what bothers Yankee fans the most. It's not the losing. It's the way they lose. They don't yeah. look like a first place team. They don't look like a team that is going to win number 28 when they play like T-ballers occasionally. And it's just embarrassing. <laughs> Now, when it comes to the stolen base thing, Carlos have been dealing with that too uh, throughout this season. And I, you know, I, I, sometimes I don't know who to blame. I don't know if it's uh, on the pitcher most of the time. I don't know if it's on the lack of throwing ability behind the plate. I mean, the, the Cardinals had so many years with Yadier Molina back there where it didn't matter what the, the pitcher was doing. People weren't going to run because Yadi was back there with that cannon and he was probably going to get you whether the guy had a big leg kick or not, whether he was doing a slide step. Um, and the Cardinals this year and last year have been learning the hard way how good Yadi was, not only uh, with calling a game and handling the pitching staff in general, but 
uh, throwing runners out. You know, they've got right now, we don't, we don't have Wilson Contreras behind the plate. Who's got the better arm of the catchers. Uh, he, he's out again, uh, got an injury. So you won't see him in this series, but they got a, a couple of rookies back there and Ivan Herrera and Pedro Pajas and Paul has threw three into center field the other day. And it's just like, I'm like, <laughs> What happened? <laughs> like, well, how did it? Did we all knew the stolen bases were going to start coming? I mean, the league told you that they were going to try to get things running a little bit more, and um, the Cardinals have not been able to figure it out. Has this been an issue for you guys all season with the stolen bases, or is that just an anomaly with what happened with Rodon? Well, I'm surprised because there was a game against the Red Sox where they stole like eight or nine bases, and it was the most bases ever stolen against the Yankees yeah. ever. And I was surprised that more teams didn't start doing that against the Yankees um, because after that game, I figured, oh boy, they're really going to expose the uh, pitch. It's more, I think in the Rodon game the other day, it was more him than Wells. I'm not going to blame Wells entirely for it because he just couldn't, he was having issues with pitch calm. And the thing with Carlos Rodon is if one thing goes wrong for him, it turns into a disaster. The pitch cam balk was was a situation. Yeah, yeah, like he reminds me of a child, like a toddler, that if one thing goes wrong, they just have a tantrum. And that's basically how his starts go. Like if one thing goes wrong, you just expect it to go spectacularly off the rails. And that's what happened the other night. Um, but the catching situation for the Yankees, we have Austin Wells has come up and done amazingly well, <laughs> lack of a better word. Um Rookie, uh, really good bat, and he was having issues when he first came up. He was one of those guys where he kept hitting it two people and hitting the ball really hard, but it kept, and I kept saying in April and May, I'm like, it's going to correct itself, and he's going to start hitting really well, and that happened. His defense can use a little work, but he basically stole the starting job from Jose Trevino, who got hurt, because Trevino doesn't have the power that Wells has. Wells is also a lefty. It's good to have lefty power. And defensively, would we like to have better catchers in that vein? Yes. But right now, I like having Austin Wells at the dish as a batter over Jose Trevino. I just wish they would work on their throwing ability. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's it's strange that like it's that catchers have not figured out how to throw it the second anymore. Where did the, <laughs> like, it's where did the catchers of our youth go? <laughs> I don't know. All I remember is Yachty. I mean, and I, we, we, I know we've been really spoiled. It's like Yachty, and then they had Mike Matheny, a lot of gold glovers along the way. And, um, you know, you, you, the Cardinals have been very spoiled in a lot of ways. And uh, we're starting to learn that life was pretty good. And uh, nowadays, uh, things are a little more difficult than uh, we are hoping them to be. Um, like, it's a 500 team in St. Louis right now. And normally you're like, all right, you know, you're, you're still in it. You're 500, but you would think that they were 20 games back. Like they were last year, like 20 games under 500, the, the way the crowds are and stuff. Like it's been uh, kind of a, a, a national story. Really. I'm gonna throw this picture up real quick, Stacy, and you can check it out. This is what it looked like before first pitch yesterday. This is during the national anthem at Bush stadium between a very good Padres team. And then the Cardinals. And uh, granted, it was a, a very hot day. 107 reportedly on the field, middle of the day, middle of the week, school's back in session. But uh, it, it, weird stuff going on in St. Louis right now as far as uh, how the fan base is reacting to what the Cardinals are, what the Cardinals have done over the last couple of years, and uh, what this front office, what the just the the staleness that has gone on. So uh, it's not a horrible baseball team, but it's not yeah. a good team either. It's just kind of meh. <laughs> They're just yeah. kind of meh. And uh, they had a couple of good series here recently too, because they, they took two out of three against Milwaukee. They took two out of three against Minnesota. These are playoff teams. And uh, they just split with the Padres who are likely a playoff team, but Nobody seems to care right now. It's it's tough. And uh, I'm hoping that there'll be some interest because anytime you get the Cardinals and Yankees together, it just seems right. It seems yeah. fun. And obviously getting to see them play in New York, something we don't see a whole lot of uh, over the years, is going to be fun to watch this weekend. Uh, and speaking of fun, you guys got a couple of guys on your roster by the name of uh, Juan Soto and Aaron Judge who are just – incredible and if for any reason to watch this weekend that's two of them 
that you should. And I want to I want to get your thoughts on what's going on with those guys and uh, what about Juan? So is he going to be around after this season? So we'll talk more with Stacy Gatsoulias from Locked On Yankees here on Locked On Cardinals next. The heat and humidity during the St. Louis summer, no joke. Us natives know that it can affect you in a lot of negative ways. Uh, like I said, 107 <laughs> yesterday on the field at Bush Stadium, just balmy and thick and gross. And you got to stay hydrated when uh, you're going to be out, not only just at Cardinal Games, but doing anything outside in that kind of weather. And that's where Liquid IV can help. It is the ultimate weapon against the heat and humidity. Get hydrated with electrolytes, essential vitamins, and clinically tested nutrients from the number one powdered hydration brand in America. It's more than just a drink. Liquid IV is a science-backed way to hydrate better than you ever have before. And it's delicious. A lot of flavors to choose from. We got the tangerine and white peach. Those are the favorites for me. But rainbow sherbet, cotton candy, popsicle firecracker. There's a ton to choose from. Find all your flavors on their website, which is liquidiv.com. Tear, pour, live more. One stick plus 16 ounces of water. It's going to hydrate you better than water alone. And it gives you three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink and eight essential vitamins and nutrients. So no more thirsty summers. They're done when you indulge in hydration with Liquid IV. Get 20% off your first order of Liquid IV when you go to liquidiv.com. Use the code MLB at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop better hydration today using promo code MLB at liquidiv.com. Thank you for making Locked On Cardinals and Locked On Yankees your first listen today. For your second listen, enjoy the Locked On MLB podcast hosted by our buddy Sully, who is here daily to provide national expertise with his trademark humor. You can prepare for the fall classic with our guy Sully, who has it all covered every single day at Locked On MLB, which is available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. It's all part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Stacey Gatsoulias from Locked On Cardinals joining us here today, and or from Locked On Yankees. I'm JD from Locked On Cardinals. Uh, Juan Soto and the one and only Aaron Judge, two of the biggest names, two of the best hitters in all of baseball, and we're seeing the ridiculous numbers that they are putting up this year. It seems like a match made in heaven, and how has the ride been so far in his first year in the pinstripes, Juan Soto has been, I, I would guess, everything you guys wanted, right? Oh, yeah. We knew Juan Soto was good, but as Yankee fans, you didn't really see him a lot because he played with the Nats and he played with the Padres. And, you know, you would see highlights and stuff, but you never really experienced him. And experiencing, excuse me, experiencing him day in and day out is just amazing i mean within the first week i was like wow this dude is for real this is really like i knew how good he was but watching him every day is totally different and it's amazing really and then <laughs> you know judge doing what he's doing again it's just absolutely bonkers he's batting like 330 with over 50 home runs and over 120 rbis and it's august 30th hello yeah. like that's an mvp year by itself and he still has a month to go it's just unbelievable the the kind of player he is and he's good on defense too you know a lot of people leave that out He's good on the bases. He's good at defense. He's 6'7", 282. You know, he should be either in basketball or football. And he's doing all these things on a baseball field. And watching it day in and day out is just an absolute pleasure. Like, really. I, I'm so mad that my dad didn't live to see Aaron Judge because I think he would love him. And I think about that every time I watch. I'm like, man, Gus would love Aaron Judge. It would just be like yeah. every night, like, oh, my God, I can't believe this guy is doing what he's doing. And the combination of Soto and Judge, um, I don't I actually don't know why anyone pitches to Aaron Judge at this point with the way the lineup <laughs> is constructed. Although I shouldn't say that because Austin Wells and Giancarlo Stanton kind of flip flop sometimes and they're behind him and they've become better I guess protection for him so they don't have to intentionally walk him but there was a couple of weeks there where I thought to myself why aren't they intentionally walking him every single time he comes up because it's like almost automatic now at this point he didn't hit any home runs during the national series which was very strange because up to that point it felt like he was hitting at least one or two every day seem like it, it. crazy yeah <laughs> but it's a pleasure it's a pleasure and hopefully this isn't Oh, the first and only year for Juan Soto as a Yankee, you know, hopefully 
Hal will back up the Brinks truck and give him whatever the hell he wants. Give him buildings in New York. I don't care. I will. Yeah. I'll give him money. I just <laughs> pay him at this point. <laughs> What, what what do you think is too much? Like, uh, I mean, nothing. I wouldn't suspect he's going to go for it. Nothing. Yeah. No, I'm I would, serious. I would I'm think being he's going to get a, a Shohei deal just because, the you know, the pitching side. Shohei is just a different thing. It's a unicorn right. type of situation. <laughs> um, but I, I'm curious what he'll get because, you know, you're still talking about. I know Juan Soto feels like he's been in the league for 15 years, but he 25. hasn't. Yeah. He's, he's barely. He's like scratching the prime of his career. Right, like he's, he's not, not even, even there yet. Right, he's not at the prime of his career, which is frightening to yeah. think about, right? Like you, most guys hit their prime 27, 28, 29. Sometimes it takes till 30, but he's not even there yet. This is the one guy that would deserve like a 15-year contract at this point or a 13-year mm -hmm. contract, right? Because then by the end, he'll be DHing and who cares? But yeah, this is the one dude that I wouldn't mind the Yankees being like, all right, let's just give him 750 million in 12 years. It's not my money. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, lock it, lock it up, whatever you got to do, and make it happen and don't let he, him get away he's from the you. Perfect Yankee. Like he's I see him in pinstripes because there are some guys, like I was so mad they didn't go after Bryce Harper. I was mad they didn't go after Manny Machado. Like there are some guys that should be in pinstripes. Juan Soto is showing why he needs to be in pinstripes the rest of his career. And if they don't lock it up and they lose him, I might burn off my tattoo. <laughs> Where is the tattoo? Lower back. Lower back. Oh, that's going to sting if you burn that off. That's not yeah. going to be fun. It's this without the flowers. It's just the interlocking NY. <laughs> I got it. It's 18. It can vote. It's old enough to vote. I got it 18 years ago. Excellent. Excellent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so and on the on the Cardinal side of things, um, it's funny because it was just a couple of years ago before Soto got shipped out to San Diego, where it was from everything we got report wise, it was down to the Padres and the Cardinals of who was going to get Juan Soto. And then there was this big controversy that the only reason that the Cardinals didn't land him is because they wouldn't trade Dylan Carlson, who they just gave away to the Rays at the trade deadline this year, uh, which was not the case. And that's not what happened. The Nationals go, yeah, the Padres had better prospects than you, like, all together. So we're just going to take that package. <laughs> it wasn't anything the Cardinals didn't try to do. They just didn't have the guns to get it done. They didn't have the, the – they didn't have it. So um, – which is sad because I remember talking about it in, on Locked on Cardinals, and I'm like – I'm like, this This team needs another injection of a, a superstar, somebody they can build around uh, because, you know, even though Paul Goldschmidt – Nolan Arenado at the time were in those was when Goldie won the MVP. Uh, it was that year. And I was so excited to see him. Well, I imagine bringing Juan Soto in and to learn under Pujols for a year and how great this would be. And when that slipped away, I was like, oh, man, I don't know what we can do to, you know, how many times are you going to get a chance to get your hands on somebody like that at that point in his career? Still have him for a couple of years. And then if you want, you worry about the contract later. But for the first couple of years, and the Padres were like, no, we see that. We see that vision. And they pulled the trigger. It didn't work out for them. They didn't win a World Series or anything like that. But uh, I, I appreciated the the cojones that it took to, to go after that. And boy, what do you think the fan base in New York would do if Soto does get away? Like, how angry are they going to be about that, Oof. considering how well he's fit in? with the team, with the city, and most importantly, you know, with your best player, Aaron Judge, where they seem super tight. Yeah, um, I think there would be, I think we would see an instance of uh, torches and pitchforks. I think, we'd actually, I think we'd actually see a riot. I think it would actually, <laughs> that people would lose their minds, obviously. Um, and we were talking about his age a little bit ago, and Aaron Judge is 32. Right. Mm -hmm. Juan Soto's 25 in seven years. Juan Soto will be 32. Aaron Judge will be 39 at the end of his contract. And then you yeah. still probably would have maybe like four or five productive years of Juan Soto, because if you can keep him as a DH, like he could be like um, one of those guys who lasts until they're like 42 sure. <laughs> as a DH yeah. and still hits like 30 home runs a year, or 25 home runs a year or something like that. Yeah. Um, this would be the biggest fumble ever in Yankees history if they don't keep Juan Soto. Worse than the not pulling the trigger for Cliff Lee in 2010. I, I'm still not over that. It's almost 15 years ago, and I'm still annoyed about that. We got a um, Cliff Lee drop. I like it. 
I mean, my God, there were some moves that they made where you're just like, and, and you think about the prospects that they were holding on to. I think it was like David Adams or something. And who? <laughs> yeah. For Cliff Lee? Come on. So, yeah, this would be the biggest fumble. Yankee fans would be, actually, I think Yankee fans would actually boycott at that point. Because Yankee fans always threaten, they threaten to boycott. Uh oh, are you gonna I, get I, one of the? Are you gonna have one of these crowds at Yankee Stadium, Stace? May, I find that maybe. hard to believe, but I never maybe. thought I'd see it in St. Louis either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. The the Cardinals. Um. I, I wish they had had more of the prime years because we had we had two years really where Goldschmidt and Arenado were together and they were still at kind of the peak of their powers that that twenty twenty one season. Um, with them both finishing in the top three in the NL MVP. And now it's almost as like you can't wait to for Goldie to just be gone uh, mm -hmm. the way that things have deteriorated so fast. And it's been sad to see because Goldie, obviously one of the, the good guys in the sport and everybody roots for him. Yeah. And Father Time caught up with him, man. It, it happens to people who don't take PEDs. That's just life. <laughs> and uh, it's sad to see. It is very <laughs> sad to see. The, the demise of Paul Goldschmidt. And it, it's not like he's just like pure garbage. Like we make it sound like he's hitting 115 with like eight <laughs> home runs or something. No, he's 20 bombs. He's going to have like 70 RBIs and he's going to his. It's just not what you're used to when right. you've, when you've had Paul Goldschmidt for so many years uh, in this league and he's been so good. And just to see him kind of fall off the cliff so quickly after an MVP season, just two years ago, it's been a little bit rough. Um, Nolan Arenado, the, the power numbers are down for Nolan, um, but he's had a really good August. Uh, he's the guy, if there's a guy in this lineup this weekend that, you know, you might want to be careful with, it's him. Uh, he He's learning to spray the ball a little bit better. He's not a, an entirely a dead pull hitter like he used to be, but the, the power is obviously still down the line to left field and in the left center gaps. Um, but, you know, he's uh, he's a guy who's starting to embrace the idea that, He's not the he's not the kid anymore, you know, even though he's not 38 or something like that, but he's in his early 30s. But he's around a lot of younger players now. And I think he's starting to embrace the idea of being that that veteran leader on the team. And um, I think it's turned things around for him. Uh, I think the mental side of accepting that and uh, being able to be sort of a mentor to some of the young guys that are on this team now, um, I think him embracing that has helped kind of ease the burden if, if uh, of what what's been going on of a, of a, a tough year for him. And I, I think it's made him feel a little bit more loose. He's always been kind of an uptight guy over yeah. there at third base. You know, he's very hard on himself. And uh, I think now that he's like, you know what, I, I don't have to hit 40 bombs for this team to win or to be happy. Uh, let's just go out and enjoy the game and uh, see what else we can do. And that has led to him being a better player here recently. So, um, you know, it, it just, Juan Soto getting away from New York would freak me out. Uh, he just belongs there. I said that, and uh, the Padres fans were not happy. Javier was not happy with me when I uh, brought that <laughs> up. I was like, he just fits there when the trade happened. I'm telling you, he's perfect for that city, and uh, we'll see it this weekend. So that's going to be uh, a lot of fun to watch. All right, we're going to talk about what the futures of these franchises look like. Uh, we'll go through a couple of the, the, the pitching matchups because we don't have every uh, pitcher starter just yet. but. Um, We'll get to all of that. We'll talk more with Stacey Gatsoulias from Locked On Yankees coming up next on Locked On Cardinals. Price Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with more than 5 million members, and it's the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Now, unlike other apps, Price Picks has it going where it's just you against the numbers. You don't have to go up against another person and worry about that. Just you and the numbers. You beat that, you win. You pick more or less on two to six player stat projections, and that's how you watch your winnings roll in. They've got promotions for you each and every week. You can now win up to 100 times your money on price picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn 10 bucks into a thousand bucks. All right. Who couldn't use an extra grand to just spend on whatever it is you want to spend it on? Sign up today, get $50 instantly. When you play $5, you don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. That's the beauty of it. It's guaranteed for you. Price picks, the best way to win real money this football season, which is uh, coming up around the corner. Stace, Jets, Giants, what, what are you? What Who do you Giants. root for? Buffalo? Giants? Giants? Yeah, no, yeah, Giants. I'm uh, Knicks, Rangers, Yankees, Giants. Okay. All right. 
I got I got no complaint. I'm a Packers fan, so if you'd said Jets, I've kind of been like, oh boy. Oh, no, but never. No, you're Giants. You're cool, even though you guys have beaten us the last couple of years, which suck. But whatever, <laughs> that's all right. Uh, make your picks in less than sixty seconds. Turn your sports opinions into real money all season long on Prize Picks. Download the Prize Picks app today. Use code Locked On MLB and get fifty dollars instantly when you play five bucks. That's code Locked On MLB on Prize Picks to get fifty dollars instantly when you play five bucks. You don't even need to win to receive the fifty dollar bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize Picks run your game. Thank you for making Locked On Cardinals and Locked On Yankees your first listen today. Now go check out the Locked On MLB podcast. Prepare for the Fall Classic with Sully. He's got you covered each and every day with uh, you know all of his his humor. It's not funny when you're losing and he makes fun of you, but it's funny when he makes fun of other people. So enjoy that. Uh, <laughs> you can find the link to Locked On MLB in the description, so you don't need to search. It's all part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team. Every day. All right. So pitching matchups real quick. Uh, Eric Fetty and Marcus Stroman. Cardinal fans, you've seen Marcus Stroman a million times when he was with the Cubs. They usually hit him pretty well. You worried about that at all, Stace? Here come the Cardinals against Stroman. We like him. Yeah, I'm worried about Stroman. Um, <laughs> aside from the hitting, he's walking a lot of guys. You know, he had a couple of good starts there. They, they kind of skipped a start for him or delayed a start for him so he could work on some things. And he came back strong in that first start. And now he's slipping back into the walking on a tightrope routine, which is not fun to watch. <laughs> yeah. No, that's not fun at all. Fetty coming over from uh, the White Sox, who, what was that, 17 people in attendance the other day? Yeah, not something that I like that. Stones looking at my attendance recently, but yeah, yeah. That, was, uh, that was a frightening looking scene at Chicago. But uh, Eric Fetty <laughs> was rescued by the Cardinals and they pulled him in and... Uh, He's starting to define his groove. I mean, he's not a guy that's, uh, you know, he's not a strikeout guy by any means, but uh, he's a guy with the sweeper and the sinker that, uh, for the most part, just tries to keep you off balance. Uh, how do the Yankees handle, I mean, obviously you got Soto from the left side, but how do they handle righty lefties? Is there a big split there, like that you're better against one or the other? Or is it kind of Oh, yeah, the road? they're horrible against lefties. Oh, hey, us too. That's awesome. Yes, awful. <laughs> just awful against lefties I, I can't remember the exact record i saw it the other day but it is abysmal how bad they are against left-handed starters it's ridiculous <laughs> they'll occasionally hit one but for the most part terrible <laughs> terrible wow mm -hmm. we don't have any right we don't have any lefties starting against you in this series but we got yay, some of the, the nationals had three so yay okay, <laughs> <good>. <laughs> uh game two on saturday kyle gibson against will warren who is that, Stacy? Because nobody in St. Louis will know who Will Warren is. Will Warren is a rookie. They um, they called him up as an emergency starter in Philadelphia when Garrett Cole was under the weather. And he did okay, but not great. And uh, he just seems to have gotten worse with every start. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, that could be an auto win for you guys uh, with Will Warren. But who knows? Now that I've said that, he'll come out and throw like, five shutout innings because I poo-pooed his past performance. <laughs> Hopefully he figured some stuff out, but I feel bad for him because he's going back and forth from Scranton to the Yankees. And, you know, it probably was pretty scary for him to have to pitch in Philadelphia under that short notice. I mean, the Yankees ended up sweeping the Phillies in Philadelphia and they um, were able to win the game that he started, but um, it's just, it's not a steady thing for Will Warren, you know, um, to be in the rotation. And that's hard to do too. You know, when you're, it's hard to have, uh, when you're a batter, it's hard when you sit for a number of games and then you're stuck in the lineup again, and then you can't get things going. And it's the same thing for a starting pitcher. If you're not there for every turn of the rotation, it's not easy to get into a groove. Yeah, no, I, I agree completely. Uh, it's one of the reasons why some of the guys that are uh, down in the minors for the Cardinals, some of their bigger prospects, Nolan Gorman was going through it, despite he's, I mean, like a 20 home run, 60 something RBI guy already, but uh, he was in a bad spot. Just could, he couldn't even put the bat on the ball anymore. So they sent him down. Jordan Walker went down again. And uh, it's for those very reasons. And people get upset about it because they're like, well, dude, we want to see these young guys play. And they're like, yeah, but 
they, they wouldn't play every single day right now for, for the Cardinals. And so doing what they did and keeping them a Memphis to get, you know, constantly being in the lineup every single day, getting at bats, getting right down there, just made more sense uh, for those guys. So I, I get where you're coming from there. Uh, and then the final game on Sunday, uh, Miles Michaelis will be taking on TBD. Uh, tell me about TBD. How good is this guy? <laughs> I think I think I saw that it's Nestor Cortez now. I could be wrong. Ah, dang it. You guys are going to put a lefty. That's rude. That's just rude. Yeah, I, I think it might be Cortez. I have to double check that. Um, but yeah, Cortez is good at home. That's That's been his thing where he's good at home, bad on the road. They're, the Yankees have a lot of weird splits going on. They're really <laughs> good on the road and not as good at home, which is strange. And yeah. like I mentioned earlier, they're great against teams above 500, not that great against teams that are under 500. So how will they do against a team who's actually 500? Who knows? We're going to find out this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> now, Nestor Cortez, some, some of the fans should be familiar with because there was rumors that the Cardinals were close to pulling the trigger on a deal with the Yankees to acquire uh, Nestor at the deadline, uh, which obviously it either fell through or things picked up with Fetty and they went that direction instead and whatever happened. But uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting this weekend. I, I'm excited to, uh, to see it. Uh, Stanton is, is back and apparently healthy. He's doing okay. Now uh, that was another, there's another connection there between the Cardinals and the Yankees and Stanton where uh, Stanton basically said, I don't want to go to St. Louis. Like, right. don't make me do it. I can say no vetoed it, went to the Yankees, but he's kind of one of those guys that, you know, that he's kind of the whipping boy for fans in New York, uh, considering the contract that he's got and, you know, the injuries he deals with a lot. Yeah. It's like, it's not your money. So calm down. And <laughs> he is consistently one of their best and only clutch hitters in the playoffs. Like he's amazing in the playoffs when he's there and when the Yankees are there. So I don't understand this hatred that people have because there are some Yankee fans who like <laughs> legitimately don't like him and it's like it's not like he's purposely getting hurt <laughs> yeah. you know that's just the way his body is and uh you just have it's to deal with it it's frustrating when, when you see it yeah yeah but when he hits it's like my god he hit a home run over 400 feet last week from his knee I don't know how he did that but he did 417 feet, something like that. And from it's his it, because his arm, his one right arm is the size of both of us, Stacey. He's a monster. Up there. He really is. And his bat speed is still like when he really like when he swings it fast and hard, it's just like, geez, like my it's God. It's disgusting. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. Uh, I, I see a lot that I love about Stanton, but obviously you bring up the, the reasons why he he catches so much flack from the Yankees fans, and it's just the injury stuff. And uh, yeah. you know you can't you can't predict that, unfortunately. Um, Garrett Cole, tell me about Garrett Cole real quick. We got a, we got a couple of minutes left, and uh, there's rumors that Garrett Cole might opt out of his contract with the Yankees, either to pinch the Yankees for more money, or I think that's what it would be. <laughs> yeah, or take his talents elsewhere. I, I don't know. Uh, how how is that being perceived? And uh, I know he's dealt with injuries this year. How's he been uh, since coming off the injured list? Coming back, he's been okay. the The two worst starts that he had were against the Mets, fittingly enough. Um, and he didn't look great against the Nationals. Uh, gave up a few solo home runs, which was weird. Um. But I like the idea of Garrett Cole going into the playoffs with basically a fresh arm because he missed the first two and a half months, you know? Sure. So he's not at the same point where Stroman, Rodon, Rodon and um, Nestor Cortez are. And I think with the opt-out, it's really to get more money. I don't think he'd leave the Yankees. Um, the yeah. only thing that worries me is he's a Boris client and so is Soto. And it's like... Ugh. Like, that's a little worrisome to me, um, but I like the idea of a fresher Garrett Cole going into the playoffs for the Yankees. If he decides to opt out and you can choose one, which one do you keep? You keep and uh, you're going to keep Juan or are you going to keep Garrett? I would say Juan. Juan? Yeah, because you would have him around for longer. I mean, if they're going to sign him, he's going to get one of those like 12 to 13 year contracts. Because again, he's at that age. It's not like he's 29 or 30. He's 25. Mm. Sign yeah. him for the rest of his natural born life. <laughs> <laughs> he, he feels like he's going to be that Julio Franco guy who plays till he's like 48. 
Like, yeah. you just oh, I was like... trying to think of Julio Franco earlier. Thank you for that. Because I, I and Nelson Cruz too, because he played till he was like forty. Yeah. That's who it was. I, I Nelson like Cruz too. Just, it was like forty two. Yeah. <laughs> he seems yeah. like that guy who's just gonna be around forever until he decides ah, I'm I'm cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna mosey on out. Like, but it doesn't feel like his talents will ever dissipate so bad that people are like, get out of here. You're not good anymore. Go away. I feel like yeah. people will always want him, and he's got that infectious attitude and stuff. Like. He's just great. He's great for the game. And uh, I, I feel like he belongs in New York. And I, I was very happy that he landed there just for the game of baseball. I thought it was a, a perfect match. And uh, obviously things are working out. If things, if they don't win a World Series this year, hmm. what happens with the Yankees in the future? Because the Cardinals are in a spot where it looks like it, it, it's not a blow it up type of thing, but this is a rebuild that's going on where they're going to probably inject a lot more youth into the lineup. A lot of like, I don't know what we're going to get. Like you're going to have a, uh, you know, a couple of veterans in your rotation still, but if they don't bring back Goldie, uh, if they decide to move on from that contract, uh, their bench is all old guys that are probably uh, they're all on one year deals. They're probably gone. People like Lance Lynn, People like Kyle Gibson, they're probably not going to be here next year. It's definitely going to be a more youth-like look in St. Louis and try to build that way as opposed to keeping, you know, a lot of veterans in there. What or do you think the the what's the Yankees trajectory? Uh, what if they don't get soda? Where do you go next? Out the window? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to think about that. Um, yeah. you know, the Yankees can never do a true rebuild. They've never done a true rebuild. Uh well, they haven't. Excuse me. They haven't since George was suspended all those years ago. That's when they did a true rebuild. Yeah. It'll never happen again as long as the Steinbrenners own the Yankees. I wish it would. I know Yankee fans don't want it, but in order to truly reset things and rebuild, you have to do it from the ground up. You can't do yeah. this half rebuild that the Yankees have done in the past. Um, like I said before we started recording, you know, other teams would kill to be in the Yankees position. I know they haven't made a World Series. They haven't won a World Series in 15 years, and Yankee fans are going crazy. But other fan bases would kill for what the Yankees have done in the last 30 years. Yeah. Like, honestly. Um, but for the future, I mean, even with Soto, they might get rid of some of the older guys that they have and get rid of some of the money that they have on the books in order to keep Soto, you know, so the team might look a yeah. lot different even, even with him. Um, it's going to be really interesting this off season to see what happens. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens in the playoffs as well, but the off season is really, this will be one of those off seasons that I think everyone in baseball is going to keep an eye on yeah. just because of Juan Soto. It might even be more than the Shohei Otani stuff from last off season. I think this might be, yeah. Because you want you have the people who will want the Yankees to not keep Juan Soto because the rest of baseball will be thrilled if he doesn't remain with the Yankees. And then yeah. you have Yankee fans who are going to, like I said, throw themselves out windows if they don't keep Juan Soto. So, yeah. Yeah. And the thing with Shohei is I never expected him to go anywhere else but L.A. Uh, no. And with Soto and the way things are going, like I, there's a chance that he does end up somewhere else if, uh, you know, because the way the, the at least from what I have heard, where the Yankees are like, look, we can't just keep throwing out money like this all the time. Like, even though we are the Yankees, it's just not something that we plan they on doing. Can. Every team can. <laughs> they just make excuses. These guys make so much money and it's just ridiculous that they cry poverty all the time. Oh, we can't spend mm. that. Yes, you can. Yeah. You can. Is there, no is there another team? Is there another team that you're worried about? Is there a certain one that you're worried about coming up and stealing him away? Oh, the from Mets. You? The Mets. The, Mets. Steve, the Steve Cohen will be like, "Here's eight hundred million dollars. Here you go." He doesn't care. He doesn't care about luxury tax. He'll spend whatever he wants to spend. Ooh, yeah, that's gonna get interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm worried about. That's the team I'm the most worried about. The Mets. All right. Well. Uh... Looks like our teams are both headed in different directions, but it looks like when you just check out the pitching matchups that maybe maybe an, a, a good series between the two teams, despite the uh, differences in what's going on in the standings, where you got one pushing 80 wins, you got one just barely over the 60 win mark. But uh, it'll be fun nonetheless to watch uh, the Yankees in action in New York. Cardinals will be there, so I'm sure we'll see packed houses and uh, should be very entertaining. So I appreciate you jumping in here today, Stace. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll keep up to date with each other on the old Twitter machine over the weekend and stuff and uh, chit chat again real soon. OK, yep. Thank you for having me.
All right. And uh, thank you guys for making Locked on Cardinals and Locked on Yankees your first listen every day if you haven't already. Give us a follow on Twitter X at LO underscore Cardinals and at JD Sports Radio. You can find Stace at Stace Gotts on, uh, on, the, on the Twitter X as well. And, uh, of course, at Locked on Yankees. Like, subscribe on YouTube, help our channels, and love for our teams grow. You guys are the best fans in baseball, despite this <laughs> being there ahead of the national anthem recently because we still got this guy i forgot to bring him up for you states <laughs> we still got this guy in our corner amazing and, and he never gives up he never gives up states <laughs> we'll see you guys next time on lockdown cardinals and lockdown yankees